Welcome to the View from the Rock podcast. I'm your host, Ruck, and I'm joined here by Papa Swapa and Morgie. Uh, long time no see, listeners. Um, we've been off on a little break here. The end of spring is always a busy one for coaches and teachers, and hopefully we can have a little more regularity, getting a few more podcasts out there before we head off to summer break. I know we started this little thing saying every Sunday we would do one, but we've fallen far, far short of that. Um, how are we doing, guys? How was Memorial Day weekend? Doing great. We, uh, there, was, there was a trip across the mountains over to Spokane for baseball. Um, had some thunderstorms, a lot of interesting things at a U-12 baseball tournament. Maybe we'll get into here later in the podcast. Went out boating with some friends, Tim and Tara and Jake and Kylie. Kelly and I and the boys and had some fun on Roach Harbor and yesterday Swap and I got to make a little high school varsity summer basketball. Yeah, right down there at Marysville Pilchuck High School. The, is it still the Tomahawks? Um, I think so. I think yeah. that the it, that uh, has been embraced by the people that have needed to embrace it. <laughs> the Tommies. <laughs> that high school, by the way, is so old. It just... I remember playing their districts in high school. Well, I think I told you yesterday, I had not been in that gym since 1990. 93 for me. And it was not the same yesterday as it was in my mind's eye. Their gym, I feel like, has a pretty similar configuration to our middle school gym. Similar lighting scheme. Yeah, old school lighting, old building, a lot of uh, 70 to 74 year olds complaining i feel like about the ability to see yeah just <laughs> our the grandparents of our group i feel like there's a lot of yellow light in that gym and dark wood hues did you happen to take a meander out of the gym down the dark hallway past the bathrooms you will hit the like hallway of fame Yes, and I tried to look for um, Mr. Swap's wife, Mrs. Swap. Kelsey said the savages. Her, her Kelsey Savage. She said that she was not up there, but Kayla was. Ooh, I did not know that. But I don't know if that was just she got taken down because I asked for a water fill station, and Kelsey goes, "Yeah, around the corner." And then I said, "Hey, where's your photo?" And uh, she said, well, Kayla's is right there. So do they have a wall of fame? They do. I'll be darned. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of these newfangled gyms will uh, not have a wall of fame. I think we're working on that. Tara, get on that. We do have a Tara's digital kiosk. on the kiosk. committee. We do. Yeah. I, don't, I have, have no idea. Using that? I know we have a committee that is... In the process of trying to figure stuff out. And meeting. And they have some money. Well. I'm getting some deja vu. Did we talk about this last time? <laughs> we may have. I, I don't know. You know I, was I talk- don't think so. Well, we did talk about the track records and the records that are going to be put up there. And I think Doug Knutson is helping with that. But not the Hall of Fame in general. Well, maybe we did. Well, do you remember walking into the old, the old Anacortes High School gym? And there were pictures covering literally almost every inch of wall space. I do. And trophy cases were full. And it's almost as though, it's almost like we're in a dystopian world where history has been expunged. (laughs) Book burning. (laughs) Well, you know, it's it's funny you say that because if someone's not from this town, they wouldn't have the nostalgic feeling of, when they were a kid, being in the hallways near the gym where they're working on getting better as an athlete and seeing this sort of thing that motivates them, which is all these athletes surrounding them up on the walls and them going, I want to be there someday. Yeah. That doesn't exist anymore. I want to be in that digital kiosk someday. Well, and it had the teams. Remember, you'd walk down the hall. Yep. Towards the weight room. Mm -hmm. And on each wall was all the team championships. Of all of the photos. Anyone that won a league championship yeah. would be or up there. Or district or top eight in state. 
And basketball with the uh, the jerseys that had the shirt sleeves. Yep. And the V-neck. So, so there's the wall of fame, which means your picture's up there. And that meant that you were an all-league selection. First, first team. Or, first or second. First team only. At first one time, only. it was second as well. Well, that, that had to have been before 1993. Yeah. So then, in addition to that, there was a plaque that was the Hall of Fame plaque. And that's no longer there. So that was, like, not related. That was... I assume AD selection or coach. Coach maybe selects. <clears throat> Excuse me. Coach will select at the end of the year one or two people for the Hall of Fame, and there was a plaque that had every sport. Yes. In every year. And that doesn't mean that that kid got first team all league. No, it doesn't because I was on that plaque, and so that's why in my mind I was like, "Where did that go?" Where did well, that plaque yeah, go? and then also like my uncle Rich Oz Memorial Award. Which no longer exists. It uh, It's sitting there. Is it still there? It, well, it's somewhere. And I told the coach, I'm like, let's bring it back. Because I brought it back in uh, 2009. And if you've ever been in my classroom, there's a bat. A baseball bat with a plaque on it that has the batting average leader for Anacortes baseball from every year up until... It probably went from 1959 to 1986, mm-hmm. and there's some legendary names on there. And Dude. that left the gym. Now it's in my classroom. Now are you p- putting that back into place in terms of the highest batting player? The player with the highest average gets on, should, a, on a bat? I should do that. Yeah. But there's no place to put it other than my classroom or my office. So if they bring someplace back to do that in the field house, gym, somewhere, you gonna you gonna offer that back up? I think that's the kind of thing that should be up there. Yeah, absolutely. So do you, can is there you any give way me to find out? It say it ended in '86 on your bat. Since then, who the does someone have those stats? The batting average leader for Anacortes? There may be a void from 1987 to 2007. Okay. And probably no way to find that out. Well, we could have a few, like your 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 two years. Yeah, maybe. So who like was your dad on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Tyland was on that. Was Hoagie? I don't think Hoagie's on there. I know uh, Dave Storer is on there. Mm. I didn't know Storer was an Anacortes grad. He was. Was the last year? Did Rodney make that? Rodney is on that. Rodney Hendricks is the last guy on that bat. He might be the last guy on that bat. Oh, Rodney. Legendary Speaking names of, on that shout bat. out to Rodney. He needs to start listening more. He quit listening for a while. He's too busy golfing. It wasn't a protest. He just quit listening. Yeah, because he's, you know, super busy. He's big time. Well, um, I don't know how we started talking about all of that, <laughs> that, that stuff, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I have here in our show highlights that there were some other things we wanted to talk about. Um, Jason, did you have something to talk about that first item? Well, we did We did in lacrosse season, a big tournament, 84 degrees. Do you remember that weekend like two weeks ago? Was that before Memorial Day? It's lost. Well, it was, it was super hot. Um, we took second and lost to uh, Glacier Peak. This seems to be a recurring theme on the podcast. Glacier Peak lacrosse. Yeah. And I think they were excited, but we we got it handed to us. So well, ended the season. It was fun. Um, I know there were some other things that happened in sports around here, but I know that, again, something came up with Sea Home with someone, and we just have to say we still hate them. We do. And Sea Home will always wear the playoff yellows. God, and it was awful. Somewhere, people are crying. Would you say the Sea Home colors are pretty similar to the shorts that Jason is currently wearing in the Yellow Dog Studios? Uh, Jason is wearing a pair of uh, Seattle Supersonic Retro shorts that's a very bright yellow. The green is 100% Sea Home green. 
Seahome yellow is not a bright yellow. Seahome yellow is like the color when you open an old container of mustard and there's the crusty mustard around the lip of the mustard container. Yes. And it turns a very, a very almost uh, pastel yellow. Mm. It's it's that kind of yellow is the sea home yellow, not so, supersonic yellow. So clearly a yellow, not like a gray yellow, more like just a creamy kind of yellow. Correct. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, the most recent sports for me that finished up were basically all I did Memorial Day weekend, which was track. We had state track. And, um, you know, that's a every, every Memorial Day weekend, that's where I'm going to be from Wednesday to Saturday. Um, we, uh, I would norm, if I didn't have to do that, I'd be out at our beach house in Camino Island, but uh, I haven't done that in like 10 years. Um, we had, we had a good state track meet. Um, I think we, the girls finished 10th in state, the boys were 12th. Uh, we had one runner, um, for the boys team, set the state record in the two mile, or sorry, not the state record, set the high school record in the two mile. And then on the girls side, we had one runner take first in state for the one mile and the two mile, and then set the state record in the two mile. Um, but in addition to those two uh, good performances, it was the biggest state team we've ever taken. We normally take two vans and have about eight kids. And this year we took a bus and had 23, could add 25 couple of kids chose not to come as alternates, but, uh, yeah, 23 kids. It was huge. That's Good. awesome. Do you, do you think that track and field and cross country are rising in terms of numbers? And I just feel like right now it's just on fire. I mean, I'm pretty excited it's about it. It's a buzz. Um, I'm excited about it. I, uh, it's the biggest team we had this year, uh, since I've been coaching the last eight years, 105 kids. Um, and yeah, never had so many go to, go to, um, state we've, we've placed higher at state previously. Um, but I think, you know, uh, I feel like we've had more participation this year than we have, um, from other sports. I think we had a lot of kids out from football, which kind of changes the dynamic of, um, kind of how the team works had more more speed this year because of that um yeah you know we're gonna have to change up how we do our banquet because we have so many kids out um i would say there's a buzz but i'm not a kid so i don't know well P coach swap i don't know i i feel like right now this year and we've talked about this on previous podcasts that it's the greatest sports year we've ever had in terms of just overall league success. Yeah, and I records. think you talked about participation there a moment ago, and just n overall numbers of kids doing things is way up. And we're still we're just a couple years out from the strange COVID years, and it's just so nice to see so many kids out doing things. But you're right; we had league champ in basketball, league champ in baseball. Um, Record number of state participants in track, wrestling, uh, tennis, league champ in tennis. And then those guys, did they take second? Yeah, they did. Our doubles team was second at state. We were, we we're district champions too for the girls team. Oh, for yeah. So I just feel like also that everyone is supporting everyone. Ag agreed. There's a great, and don't, don't let me uh, forget to mention football, which made the quarterfinals. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I... Well, swimming, I, I mean, all... Yeah. I don't know in the past that this didn't go on, but I feel like right now there's a lot of encouragement cross-season, like between coaches and kids of like, hey, you should be doing three sports a year. You yeah. should be huh. doing yep. something in the fall, the winter, and the spring. And if you look at Linden... That's what they have. Yeah. They, their kids play all the sports. Linden Way is what you want to try and be. Shout out to Linden Baseball, second in state. They were just a run or two away from being the first school, according to Twitter, so I know it's true, the first school in state history to win baseball, football, 
basketball in the same year. And the first player. Yeah, they had a, one kid who was Kobe a Bar. athlete in all three sports. And I uh, played with his dad and brother or uncle in, in college. Wait, hold up. Did You were just saying that Lyndon was the first to win all three? They to- are... It, he they would have been, and he would have been the first player in the history of Washington. Gotcha. So you remember back, uh, Josh Kraft, two thousand twelve. Pretty sure they won all three that year. They were second in baseball that year. They as were well. yep. even with like a oh, Visser, and they had a few years there where they were just. So I. Th- think that in 2012 it was the same scenario okay. and they were second in baseball that year lost Shoot. a heartbreaker to archbishop wow. in the state championship and lost a heartbreaker the other night to tumwater shout out to tumwater but you know baseball has probably got to be the hardest one out of those three to do from the standpoint of i feel like and this is me talking as a non-baseball guy i feel like there's a little more luck or chance involved in baseball as far as you might make good contact, high exit velocity, and it finds somebody. Baseball's weird. And it sounds like an excuse or a cliche, but baseball's weird. It is. You it's know, super weird. The base, best team doesn't always win. Um, it, it's uh, The hardest hit balls were hit right to someone. Yeah. It just baseball's happens. weird. It happens. Yeah. Hey, yeah. real quick, an update on the secret podcast. So we have been passing out golden tickets. Getting a lot of good feedback from that. Thank you to my wife uh, for helping. Mrs. Morgenthaler. Um, we yeah. have a venue, the Anchor. Anchor in. And uh, Jeff Lizenby is graciously accepting us. Proprietor of the Anchor. And we will let you know and give you th- at least three weeks notice. So we're looking at end of summer. And we will have a live show. What you can't see is that Jason is just staring at me as he says that because it's really my fault that we haven't even put anything pen to paper so far because I have a bit of a busy schedule. We all, hey, everyone does. So we will try and figure it out and make sure that you get ample notice. It could possibly not be on a Sunday. So maybe you could take off a late afternoon and come hang with us. Could be possible that for those of you who do not have the summers off, you could be looking at taking a day off. Yeah. And if you do have the summer off, you don't have to take the day off. That sounds like a real treat. (laughs) Um, So uh, next up, you know, uh, our intro that lasts 15 minutes normally is right at 18. And moving on to our first topic, which I don't think we need a break for, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, is musical genre. Uh, I didn't really give a an idea of where we're going this podcast today. I guess we're a little rusty. So first of all, we're going to be in musical musical genre, which for us today is best three person bands or groups ever. Um, next after that will be our beer of the week, and finally we'll be talking about our top three baseball movies of all time. Ooh! So first of all, tell us about this per- best three person band ever idea jason well swap and i we were talking about it last week just trying to come up with ideas for genres so then we were like well let's think about best three-person band ever and on the top of our head we came up with a few we did and you know as a classic rock guy, I initially thought of the power trio of Jack Bruce, Ginger Baker, and Eric Clapton, who you might know as Cream. Yeah. And then we came up with like three or four, and we're like, wow, maybe we need to expand it. But then, after doing some research, there's a lot. There are a lot of three-person bands. So I, you know, a few that come to mind for me when I think of growing up and just classic rock is ZZ Top. Yeah, ZZ Top definitely has, you know, when you hear a ZZ Top song, you know it's ZZ Top. And I think what got them over the top was MTV. The beards. With the commercials, I mean, with the videos, with the girls and the old, the classic cars, 
Well, and people didn't know what they looked like. Legs, sharp dressed man. What is their name? ZZ Top. Do you know? We might need to fact check that. Yeah. I uh Dusty Baker. Frank Beard is the drummer, which, which is, is ironic. Ironic. <laughs> and this is not Dusty Baker, the manager of the Astros. No. And then the lead singer and lead guitar player's name is? I have no idea. I definitely don't know. You don't know? No, I have no idea. Wow. I love it when Swap doesn't know something. Isn't that just classic? Yes. Uh, and I'm drawing a blank as well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. It, oh, my God. No. Well, I can look it up for you if you want. Um, what I will say is they're called ZZ Top because according to band member Billy Gibbons. Oh, Billy Gibbons. Uh, it came from a tribute to B.B. King. The band originally were going to call themselves ZZ King in King's honor, but they thought it was too similar um, because he was at the top of the blues world. They changed it to ZZ Top. I'll be damned. And Gibbons was a huge blues guy. Really? Yes. So if you think look at like some of his riffs, uh, LaGrange. Yeah. Mm, love that. So, I, I mean, that's to me, you know... Uh, is number one. Well, how about Nirvana? Nirvana is right there, right there. Right there, right there. But, uh, yes, I mean, you look at, we. I mean, we talked about having that grunge era and Cobain. I mean, that just changed the way music was. And then towards the end of their tenure... They brought in someone else that is now playing with the Foo Fighters that is best friends with Dave Grohl. Do you know that person's name? So he is the he is a guitar player. Yeah. So towards towards the end there, they had a fourth guy. Yes. But for Nirvana? T- yes. Hmm. But for the first seven years. Now, I assume the typical setup for a three person band um, would be there's a drummer, bass guitar and normally well not normally but the lead singer is either lead guitar or bass okay there's only two bands that come to mind for me where the lead singer is the bass player the police sting sting was the bass player didn't know that and he's a lefty oh did not know sting was a lefty and then um one of my bands that I really love and Mr. Swap hates, Hugh, I love you, uh, Rush. <laughs> Getty Lee is a bass player. So a couple weeks ago, I knew it was going to be a bad day because I went up to make a cup of coffee in the morning and I was out of coffee. And then I went to school and turned on the car and Limelight was playing. Oh, love it. <laughs> no, Rush, and I've talked about this before, the, the sound that they make... Okay bothers me and we found a band like that earlier today talking about in preparation for this show not a three-person band but we found a band that has the same effect on mr morgenthaler that would be cake or primus (laughs) primus is another one that's on the list so primus i don't hate but i can only take primus in small doses cake i really like Well, there's another band that's a a good three-person band. They're from Portland, Um, 90s, and Mr. Swap is a big fan. And he actually found out a week ago that I'm not really Everclear. Oh, I love Everclear. They're they're listed as... uh, Art Art uh, Alakakis? Art Alazakis? Yes. (laughs) Alakakis? Um, let's see. There's a few more. So Green Day. Rock, you like Green Day? Love Green Day. Are they a three-person band? Yep. So the, the lead singer is a uh, gu- lead guitar. Okay. Now, I just, you know, when I look up Everclear, it shows more than three people in their band. So is this like, uh, are all these verified? Is well, it like what they started out as? Cause... I think started out as. Okay. For most of these bands, they are three. 
Everclear, I might have to fact check with my wife. Because I've got four people listed. Is Mrs. Morgenthaler an Everclear fan? No, she was just helping me out with some uh, pre... So this could be a podcast where when this drops, we're going to have a lot of people fact check us. Yeah. So real quick, we know these are for sure. Run DMC. Okay. Beastie Boys. Amazing. You say so. <laughs> Ruck, a Beastie Boys are three. Okay. Oh, because... Oh, yeah, whatever. Um, also, isn't Jimi Hendrix experience? So they that was... I didn't count that because I think Jimi Hendrix is by himself. I mean, did he play all the instruments? Is that what you're saying? No. Oh. Okay. Hey, here's one that's not on the list that I can verify is three people. The White Buffalo. <laughs> oh, oh Wait, yeah. It's not just one guy? <laughs> no. No. That's a... I had no idea. That is 100%. Is that not correct, Mr. Morgenthaler? That is correct. One of my favorite bands we've talked about before, Silver Chair. Are they Australian? Yes. Sublime. Oh, I love Sublime. Bee Gees. There were three. Also Australian? Mm, yeah. I don't know. Oh, 100%. Uh, that was on the podcast, Rock. Come dude, on. It's just, it's we out had, of my brain. Our last podcast was Australian band. Dude, that was so long ago. I have um, no idea. Crosby, Stills, Nash. Not Young. Yes. So CSN without Y. Isn't the presidents of the United States of America also? Peaches. So let me go through just a few real quick. Pepper, Genesis. I have no idea who Pepper is. So Pepper is like the Hawaiian sublime. My wife and I have seen them four times in concert. They're amazing. Yeah. I still have no idea who they are. (laughs) They're from Kona. You've heard a song that I played for you. (laughs) Uh, Isn't he so good at describing things? <laughs> three, three Dog Night, Depeche Mode. Shout out to uh, Heather Moore. Depeche loves, Mode. Loves Depeche Mode. Yeah. Cream, you said, no doubt. Blink-182. Ooh, I love Blink-182. Goo Goo Dolls, Meat Puppets, Primus. Can I ask you this real quick? Can you think of a three-person female band? Well, I, I actually, Ruck came up with this band, didn't you? Are you talking about Bananarama? Bananarama. Bananarama. I mean, I literally know next to nothing about Bananarama because I wasn't alive when Cruel that Summer band was doing its but thing. But MTV has a great video with Bananarama. It's a Cruel Summer. Early MTV. Like 85. Era. 86. Bananarama. I love that song. When I... So for track and field and cross country, I make a highlight video at the end of every season. And for track, I think it was, that was like one of my like central songs. I love that song. Really good band name too. I have no idea what it means, but it is. I think it's just a cool sounding name. Yeah. TLC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Destiny's Child. Yeah. Yeah, There you go. You know, if there's any more, our women podcast listeners or men, please let us know. How about Salt and Peppa? The internet says that it's a three person band, but as you all pointed out when I mentioned it, you said, Well, isn't that Salt and Peppa? Isn't that two? I have no idea. It sounds like two, but I think it's three. So, who is there a way to actually figure? So, the internet tells me that it's three people. So, Mr. Morgenthaler, did you mention Motorhead? I did. I I was about ready. It's on there. Lemmy. I Lemmy. Love Motorhead. So, if you think about Genesis, real quick, because I'm a big Phil Collins fan. So, didn't know that. Nice. In the early '90s, if you turned on the radio for 20 minutes, you would hear, hear Phil Collins at some point. Always in the air tonight. Land um, of confusion. You remember Su- the video? Su Su Studio. Su Su Studio. Worst song ever. Oh. <laughs> so I did a fact check. Okay. Nirvana. Pat Smear. Yes. So he joined. A, he joined uh, Nirvana. 
as a touring guitarist in 93. So I can visualize him, unless I'm imagining my past, which is possible. I can visualize him in the MTV Unplugged video. Wasn't in the first five years. Right. And following the death of Cobain, drummer Grohl went on to form Foo Fighters, and he joined them in 97, left, and joined them back in 05, and has never left them. So he is still... In Foo Fighters? Correct. Full-time member since tw- 2010 as a rhythm guitarist for Foo Fighters. And we've talked about this before, but can you imagine being in Nirvana and Foo Fighters? No, I can't even imagine being in one band. It would be amazing. I don't know. You know, we talk about this. Imagine if we were born 15 years earlier, the amount of music that we would have watched live. Oh, my gosh. Zeppelin, Hendrix, maybe, The Doors. Yeah. It is kind of wild. Like, when I talk to my dad about music, and he he talks about the concerts he went to, he went to and it's just like, sort of offhand, like talking about these bands that in my mind, it would be crazy to have went to like Santana and there's like 50 people on stage or going to Black Sabbath at like when it was like peak Black Sabbath. And it's like, are you kidding me? No. Your dad went to Black Sabbath? Yeah. Oh. This is, this and like, it, this is what's even more crazy is that real quick, Ruck's dad and my dad graduated together. Wow. Same class? Correct. But you know, 20, 30 years from now, there's going to, our kids are going to be saying, your dad saw Soundgarden. Your dad saw Pearl Jam. Yeah. Your dad saw Ice Cube. I mean, (laughs) what kind of music is going to be out in 20 years? Not as good as going to be absolute dog poo. (laughs) Because I can't say the S word. You know, if Taylor Swift is still producing music, I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> so my daughter's going to Taylor Swift. Is that in July? July 22. C- so is my niece, Bree. I'll be damned. In Seattle? Yeah. Do you guys have to get that in the secondary market, or were you in line for that? Uh, she was able... She got it as a Christmas present. December, right? Her cousin. But December they came out. Yeah. There was a huge thing. No, I tried. I'm a big Swift fan. So there's been some people that have been scammed. Well... I yes, I know one a uh, a kid on our team told me that he sold his tickets. Was it four tickets? I forget how many that was, and it was like sold them for seventy five hundred dollars. Like, like they're oh yeah, expensive. no, yeah, and it's like nosebleeds are expensive. Yeah, you know, as much as I would love to go to T Swift, because honestly, at this point, it's the music I most consistently listen to. When I'm at school, I need something to calm me down from going insane. And so I put T-Swift on. Um, I just don't know that it would be a great musical experience to go see Taylor Swift amongst 100,000 people at a stadium where I'm so far away. But it's not... uh, You're at Climate Pledge. So 35,000. Is that what it holds? 56. No, it does not. We We can fact check that. I would no, say she's, less no than, she's at Lumen. Oh, really? Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. So, but yeah. here's the deal. I, I honestly, I, I have no desire to go see those type of people because their recording in the studio is way better. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's more about the show for them yeah. and but, less and like they're wearing a microphone and they're moving around. There's a lot of but old Taylor Swift when it was just her and the guitar. Is magic. I mean, I would rather just go see a band jam and just get after it. Dirty uh, Honey. Dirty Honey. So we went to the Black Crows two summers ago. Opening band, Dirty Honey. We'd never heard of them. We walk in, absolutely floored. So to our tens of listeners, if you have not heard Dirty Honey, they're like, they're like a late 80s hair band. Incredible. I think we have more than 10 listeners. But isn't that just something that really sets great concert experiences apart where 
the opener you've probably never listened to and you li- and you show up and you're just blown away by them. Like, it was it was the best opening act I've ever seen. Well, I was talking to our friends. We never don't we don't even go sometimes. No, we and show right. up late. They were amazing. <laughs> oh, it was so fun. And it was like the end of COVID kind of. Yeah. You know, we had good seats. Mr. Thank Johnston you. got us a few hamburgers right before the concert. And uh, thank you, Brad and Heather, for the tickets. Oh, Heather. Our driver was amazing. Oh, just an amazing human. He, you know, he picked us up afterwards with, <laughs> can I say this on the podcast? Cold Rainier. Yes. Because <laughs> we asked for a Rainier beer after we got back. Rain, rain here, beer, beer. beer. But we get there, we walk in, and we're halfway through the Dirty Honey show. And Dirty Honey is so good. And now you look at what they say. It's like top three new bands oh, that are coming out. Dirty really? Honey. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they did, what was the Aerosmith cover they did? Uh, Last Child. Oh, it was it was so good. And oh, then they have Rolling Sevens. Um, they they have good good stuff. So they really do, and they're I think they're in Europe right now. So hopefully, uh, maybe we can go to Aerosmith and Black Rose. I know we're waiting on the basketball schedule. Yep, but uh, that's Aerosmith's probably last tour. We've seen the Black Crows; they were great. And we are I'm, definitely going to Kiss. And I I am so excited. I might paint my face for, for Kiss. Kiss. Yes. And who else are we seeing in August? Uh, we are going to see Great White and Slaughter. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, it's going to be a great five months. You guys just reminded me of a, a seminal moment in my, my childhood. Uh, when I turned 21, that night when I went to the bars in Bellingham, um, there was, I don't know why, this is January 31st, no reason that people should be dressed up. I went to the Up and Up, and there were four dudes, five, however many there are in Kiss, Dressed up, full face paint, like Kiss, at the bar I was at, That's and I got awesome. a picture with them. I'll show you guys here at our break coming up. Oh, like I, that was the highlight of that night. I don't know that. That's a lot of work. I don't know if you realize that, like Gene and those guys. I don't. I think seventy five percent of the band they do their own makeup every night. Yes. Wow. Not a three person band. No. By the way, but two guitars. Rhythm and no, so bass and lead. So normally a four person band, you have a singer, yeah, and he could play a little rhythm. Mm-hmm. Then you have the lead guitar, bass, and then drums. And there's your four person typical four person band. Kiss has two guitars, yeah. So uh, Tommy Thayer and Paul Stanley, yes, and Tommy Thayer, Pacific grad. No, Is he? he wasn't a Pacific grad, but he was on the board of trustees for twelve years, and he is good friends with. Um, my coach, who was the AD. So they did a fundraiser, a golf event in Portland. So I am actually going to reach out to coach and have him reach out to Tommy Thayer. I'm going to say it once again. I'll be damned. We might have <laughs> backstage passes. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> like, it could happen. There is a chance. More than zero. So you're saying there's a chance. Like, we have a chance. Because he's good buddies with my coach, who I just hung out with a month ago. And when I left there, I'm like, oh, my God. You know Tommy Thayer really well. And I think Coach is going to the show in Portland to see him. I believe that is November 6th at Climate Pledge. And then just add one more thing to our concert schedule. Are we not looking at White Buffalo in October? In either Victoria or Vancouver, uh, we are. It's it has to be Vancouver. Victoria is hard to get to. We're, I can, we can't drive the boat over. Victoria no. would be so cool though. It would be amazing. But Victoria, so, but would you have can't to... you can't miss one day of work to go to Victoria. You got to miss two. And, and, and it's also it's there. also <laughs> weather dependent. Ruck can't have any wind that... on the on the Thunder Jet. Yeah. Oh. The twenty one because we're going across the Strait. Yeah, on a day so like... So we want to make it there. That's the breaks. Speaking of breaks, you guys ready for a little break before we head into our final two segments of the day? We uh, are. And coming up next, we're going to talk about our beer of the week and our top three baseball movies. 
Welcome back to the View from the Rock podcast. Back from break, and we had an opportunity to uh, pour our beer of the day. Our beer of the day is from Deschutes Brewery, and I'm going to let Jason take it over from here to tell us a little bit about the Symphonic Chronic Double Dank IPA. Ooh. Oh, that sounds amazing. Like Ruck said, Symphonic Chronic Double Dank IPA by Deschutes Brewery, which is in Bend, Oregon. Uh, 9% ABV. Whew, that's a lot of beer. Yeah, Heavy with hitter. a 60 IBU. So this is their quote. Hey, before you do that, what's an IBU? Do we know? I know. I'm asking if we know. And our listeners, if they so know. So is it index beer? No. Nope. Nope. It's... It's the, it's the amount of hops nope. that are in the... Is it's, that something you step on where you might blow up? <laughs> I think that's an I, IUD. No, well, that's, I, a, that's a form of birth control. <laughs> for a woman. <laughs> IED? <laughs> okay. Uh, IBU stands for International Bitterness Unit. So Ooh. the higher the number is, the more bitterness it has. So when you go to a brewery or any place that serves beer... If they list like you know the union in town, they'll always list that IBU next to it. If you want something with less bitterness, just look for a lower number. All the beer I've drank, and I did not know that. So international bitter bitterness. What is the U? Unit. Okay. So this is sixty units of, of internationally bitterness. bitterness. And is that a low IBU? I think that's a little above average. I think fifty is pretty average. A lot of IPAs are going to be. Um, up there, if it's hazy, it's probably less in the bitterness category. Yeah, I don't but a like classic, hazy. classic West Coast is going to be higher. higher. So yeah. this this uh, this beer might need the IDU, the International <laughs> Dank Unit, Mr. <laughs> Morgenthaler. Well, when anything that says chronic and dank in it, it's skunky. You Remember know, we talked about it on the last podcast. Yeah. When I smell this, though, it doesn't smell. It doesn't. It smells smell piney. Which, okay. read the description. Okay, so here's the description. Step to the beat of this crisp and dank symphony with notes of grapefruit, pine resin, and mango. Untapped mm. gives it a four out of five. But it's only 387 reviews. Where did you get this beer? I got it at Rosario. Oh, hey, real quick. This is so funny. <laughs> you remember our first podcast? <laughs> Yeah. When yes. a woman drove through Rosario. And so now they have a door. They fixed it. They fixed it. <laughs> I drove up today. There's not a real door. So it's That's glass again? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like a regular, it looks normal. <laughs> You're kidding me. No. I, wa- I was like, oh, my God, this is podcast material. Dude, I went, in, I went <laughs> to the Rosario. So when I got back from the state track meet, I got my car. And I immediately drove to Rosario before I went home because I didn't have anything in my house. And I found out that they'd fixed the front door. But also, I went inside, and the music was loud. The lights were down. Oh, it's still the same. The, the stuff. It was like I was in a club. So, so I went in the there the other day. Been there? Not at night. Normally, it's during oh, the day. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. went in there to buy beer the other day, and the guy said, what's the coolest thing you've ever done? <laughs> I like that is not your ordinary neighborhood store. I'm sorry, but I wa- I drove in today and I'm like, oh my god, they fixed it. It's not a door, a real door, Ross. Metcalf. Yeah, <laughs> like a door you go through. A door you go through. It's a. Re- yes, yeah, I I no, secretly, it's it's all fixed. I had been secretly hoping they would keep it that way, and it really gives it sort of a homey vibe. I'm glad, but I wanted him to paint the was. door. So it, it wasn't looks, just hey, it looks amazing. It looks like a real store. It does. Yep. It looks like they're back. Yep. Wow. So anyway, hold on. Let me let me. So where I was another. going with that is you got this only has four hundred reviews. Yeah. No, three hundred and eighty seven. But it's a specialty beer. I think it comes in a twenty two ounce. They yeah. don't do six packs. And Rosario is very special about um, what they 
Yeah. So, so, so we need to, I think, in later podcasts, we might need to have them be a sponsor. Mm. Or involved in some capacity. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Get and, there. and Merle Inc. We'll talk about that later. But Merle Inc. is our first official sponsor. Yes. Um, yeah, it would be great to get some recommendations from them to talk about. Um, recommendations from the Rosario. Yeah. As far as beers, like, oh, hey, this is the new one of the week. So now, what, we'd have to do weekly podcast if that was the case, and that is pushing it for well, us. Well, we can do. We're gonna have to do a few before we get on break, and yeah. then we're gonna come back for the for the secret podcast. I think you know what should happen. Speaking about this beer, the dank level is not they, like I thought it would be, which I is know. good. I don't like a danky beer. I don't either. I thought it was gonna be super danky. Not danky. So do you know Elysian does a danky beer? That's very dank. Oh, it was so dank. Very, very dank. Do with my like, sister and it was it it's Do you like your beers danky? No. Okay. It smelled like marijuana. Yes. That's not what I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> it did. Yeah. Um hey, you know what? The funny thing is, when we started this segment, you ahead of time said we're gonna spend five minutes talking about our beer, and it's been six and a half minutes. So uh with that in mind, we're gonna move on to our top three baseball movies of all time. And let me tell you, it made me realize I haven't seen a baseball movie in quite some time. Um, I feel like it's probably a much smaller category for me, maybe even than basketball. And I don't really care what my picks are. All I really want to do is find out what swaps are. So we're going to save that to last. Uh, Jason, why don't you let us know what is your number three baseball movie in your top So three? my number three movie of all time, baseball. I sat here and thought about it for a while, and then my beautiful wife, Kelly, gave me... That was me, very nice of you. Thank you. <laughs> that was a shout out. She came up with one. I'm like, oh, man, I forgot about that one. So maybe I should do a little more research. It helped me, but my number three is just because it was a it was an amazing movie. It was just fun. Uh, a League of Their Own. Hmm. Oh, that was a great movie. I didn't even think of that one. Um, Tom Hanks as Jimmy Dugan, who was an ex ball player. I think he was a big time drunk, and he chewed a lot. And his famous line is what swap. There's no crying in baseball. Yeah, there's no freaking crying in baseball. Like, this, that's just how it is. So when I think about it, you know, you got Dottie, who was, what was her name? Who played Dottie? Was it Lori Petty? Nope. Gina Davis. Gina Davis. And then her sister was Kit. And that was Lori Petty. Yes. And then Marla Hooch. Was that Madonna? No. Marla Hooch. Was the bigger w- woman? Oh, it was Rosie O'Donnell. Nope. Am I am I just imagining people right now? <laughs> no. They were in that movie. Yeah, Rosie they're O'Donnell's all in that there. movie. I don't know her name of Marla Hooch, but she was the one. Remember when the Navy came in and she started singing? They went out one night. Uh, you have May and Doris, and Doris was Madonna, but Marla Hooch was she was a masher. Just a great movie. I just thought it was... It's just a fun movie. It's a great movie. You know, and when you... I mean, he's sitting there, and he's he's hung over, and he's sitting there taking a pee, and he's like, there's no crying in baseball. You know? Like, it just reminds me of being... That's how it was. And I'm just going to... I'm going to build off of that a little bit here, and this is not a top three, but, I, you know, I have an aunt, my mom's sister, who is a nun, Sister Kath, and she grew up playing sports... But it was in a time when women really, women's sports were not recognized. And she was a great baseball player, but they didn't have anything for women then. So when I watched that movie, I thought of my Aunt Kath, Sister Kath. It was a great, you know, because all the men were off to war. Yeah. And uh, if you remember, there was Lenny or Squiggy was announcing in that movie from uh, 
Sure. What's Laverne the, and Shirley. Yes. Man, that was a great show back in the day. Yeah. So you know that's my number three. I've seen La- Laverne and Shirley. I'm amazed because it was so old. <laughs> I've never seen a league of their own. It was. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Here we go. It's not hey. even like I, I I set this up to where I purposely try to withhold these things. I just have lived such a sheltered life because of when I was born and the things that I actually am interested in. Um, yeah. So I, a league of their own is early nineties. Yeah. 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 Maybe. All right. Okay. Um, Rock your number three. You no, know, my number three movie is a movie. Maybe neither of you have seen and it was a little big league. So in that movie, I think the premise is not, if I'm remembering correctly, is that this kid somehow like inherits the team and he becomes, gosh, does he become the manager or is he, he becomes the owner and then manager of the Minnesota Twins. And I like the movie a lot because it was a good movie when I was a kid. But one of the iconic moments is the Twins play the Mariners. I believe it's like in the first round. Yeah, that's right. And they portray Ken Griffey Jr. as such a baddie. Like he's one of the few stars actually in the movie who's a baseball player. And he comes to the plate and they've got this like music that's just like he's an evil dude. And he walks up there and just pops a home run and just like winks at everybody as he walks the bases. Moves his hat backwards. <sighs> it's been a long time since I've seen it. But it's a great moment if you're a Seattle sports fan. Swapper? My number three, and I think it's probably going to be higher for both of you. Major League. Oh, man. It's, that's amazing. It's iconic. Oh. You got Willie Mays Hayes. You got uh, Ricky Vaughn. You've got the manager, Lou. Um, and I've, I've heard from people, and I can't verify this because I never played pro baseball, but I've heard from people that that is more like the major leagues than movies that people think are like the major leagues. That's a, that makes it even better. It makes <laughs> it even better, doesn't dude, it? The guys show up to work. They're like, dude, Vaughn, what are you doing? You're fooling around with someone over there. <laughs> I love it. You got Tom Berenger driving the bullpen vehicle over to Rene Russo's house. It's a great movie. I mean, think about what happens when you're a rookie or a vet. Like yesterday, even at uh, basketball, we have uh, one of our kids carrying the basketball bag because he's a rookie. What's well, how it is? Yeah. Uh, the uh, slugger in Major League for uh, the other team. For the other team. Clue Haywood. Oh, my God. So the guy that was played <laughs> first base for the Yankees on the, in the movie. Yeah. That spit a lot and, was, and just he looked like Gorman Thomas. He did look like Gorman Thomas. <laughs> what was his name? I think that was Clue Haywood. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Did I? Uh, yeah, all right. I thought I cussed. Oh, I I didn't hear it. Okay. I don't think you did. You might have. I'm trying, <laughs> trying um, not to. You know the the. I don't know if anyone noticed the silence for me during that time. It's, this is one of those movies that's been on TV so much that I've seen clips of it, but I've never really watched the movie. Like, so I've, Ruck, you're gonna yeah. watch it here in the basement, all of it. Like when we finish this. Podcast no, in the next okay. two months. Well, it could one of those be tonight. Months, if I'm going to be in Australia, so I don't know about that. But Major League Two sucks. Um, don't most sequels? No. Yeah, Caddyshack Two sucks. I mean, Toy Story Two is the only great sequel there is. Oh, take that back. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, is the greatest I mean, sequel but is that time. a sequel? Because he made eight. The you're talking about Star Wars? Yeah, or six. I mean, at the time it was a sequel, and then they made a bunch of oh. ones recently where. Not worth anyone's time watching. Hey, we're talking about someone's wheelhouse, so maybe we should do on another podcast top three Star Wars movies. Yeah, that's easy. Well, (laughs) (laughs) 
You were talking about sequels. Godfather 2 oh. is better than Godfather 1. Mm. Yeah, now that's got me thinking. Top sequels. Top three sequels. That's a good good Could category, be. too. Hey, we got to get to number two. Got to gotta put them in the bag. So I'm number two? Yeah, you are. Mm. If you can remember. I got it. Sandlot for me. Oh, yeah. Classic. Yep. Uh, you know, you see all these kids wearing the shirts, you're killing me, Smalls. I mean, do you know the kid that says that, his name, in the movie? The kid who says, who's You're name? killing me, Smalls. And the picture of him. Is it Squints? His name is Ham Porter. Yeah. He's the catcher. Ham. The chunky Ham? catcher. Ham is his nickname. Like not in real life, no. Like in the in the in the show, it's a great movie. He's also the guy that is the goalie in uh, Big Green. You ever seen Big Green? Oh, that's a good movie. I don't even know what I've never heard of it. Right now. <laughs> that's a Are soccer you in movie. Iceland? That's a soccer movie. <laughs> so when my kids were little, back in the days when they had a DVD player in a van, yes, and you would. They don't do that on a road trip. Yeah, they would watch the Sandlot over and over again. When they go in James Earl Jones's house, J- can I just say that anytime you put James Earl Jones in a movie, everything is better. You know what movies James Earl Jones is featured in heavily? Star Wars. He's the voice of Darth Vader. I knew that. This is this is a big green. Oh, you remember that guy? Remember that movie? No, no? but I. Oh, that is no. definitely the kid from Sandlot. Though. Yes, yeah. That and he was childhood. born to be a goalie. Did you well, see though? Like movie. about definitely five years ago, tiger. they did a Super Bowl commercial with him. Really? Like with a beer commercial. So you know he was also featured heavily in a baseball movie. Other than the Sandlot. What is he in your top two? He's in the bullpen. Oh. oh, maybe this would be a good time to talk about what the bullpen is. You want to tell us what might the be a good time? Is? So the bullpen is movies about baseball that did not make our top three. Okay, they're just waiting to get in the top three. Um, so, gosh, I'm going back and forth um, with this. Uh, I guess I'm going to say for me, Field of Dreams is number two. That was a movie growing up that is just um, iconic as far as it gives you a real nostalgia about baseball and a longing for this, I feel like, purity of baseball, um, which is interesting because isn't it, the, isn't it the, the Black Sox that come out of the outfield who were the ones that cheated? Is that correct? Yeah, it was the 1919 White Sox who purportedly – through the World Series, and that's been up for historical debate. Shoeless Joe Jackson was the star player for that team, and he was banned from the Hall of Fame because of his implication in the gambling scandal. Still? To this day. And the book that the movie is based on by W.P. Kinsella. It's based on a book? W.P. Kinsella. Who lives, lived... In White Rock. BC? Really? Yes. And was a Mariner fan. Wow. The book that the movie was made on was actually called Shoeless Joe. I feel like I need to read that now. Maybe some summer reading. It's, you know, and he's a great author. He wrote that book and he wrote a book called The Iowa Baseball Confederacy. Mm. That was, and it's been a long time, it's been 30 years since I read it, but I believe that it was the Chicago Cubs playing a group of local all-stars in Iowa in a game that was played on an Indian burial ground. And it went to infinite extra innings because the ground was cursed and the game could never end. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like the game never ended to this day. Well, you got to finish the book to find out. Oh my gosh. What a tease. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was I haven't th- heard that word. You're such a tease. 
swappy. When you when's the last time you heard that word? It's been thirty one years. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. That was a high school word. Really? Yeah. That was like your your vernacular, your slang, being a tease. But anyway, I would I would recommend reading that book. You'd like it. Okay. What's your uh, what's your number two? So my number two is pretty obscure. Okay, you ready for this? It's a it's a movie called Bang the Drum Slowly. Oh. Based on a book by Mark Harris, which was a sequel to another book called The Southpaw. In the movie Bang the Drum Slowly, we have a young actor by the name of Robert De Niro. Holy cow. Wow. What? Who plays a catcher that is terminally ill. And he's a catcher that is the personal catcher for the team's star pitcher. And the star pitcher is the only one that knows the catcher is dying. Dang. Can we watch that? <laughs> I just gave myself goosebumps. Oh, dude, I'm getting them. Wow. According to my wife, it's called chicken skin. So, was this... Where'd you find that? Well, so is this a minor league team or is this a... This is, it's a fictional major league team okay. called the New York Mammoths. And the, the star pitcher is a man by the name of Henry Wiggins who has written a book. And if you read Mark Harris's books, they're written in the first person by Henry Wiggins. Mm. And Robert De Niro's character, who is a catcher named Bruce Pearson, refers to Henry Wiggins as Arthur because he doesn't know the word author. Wow. So, so the second book in the series, Bang the Drum Slowly, the plot arc is Bruce Pearson, the catcher, terminally ill. The pitcher knows he's dying. Bruce Pearson goes on to have some key moments as a player, even though the pitcher knows he's dying and nobody else does. And they made a movie out of it. So this is, are you saying this is based on real events? No. Okay. Completely fictional. Wow. And so, De Niro's the catcher. De Niro is the catcher. What year? I believe the movie was made in 1971. You can fact check that, Mr. Ruck Dashel. Um, yeah, so the book was published in 1956. The movie was published in night or released in 1973. Um, and it looks like it won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Which would Dude, that be De Niro or would that be um the guy who played Henry Wiggin. So the guy who played Henry Wiggin was Michael Moriarty. Yeah. Oh who was a big actor at the time, obviously didn't hit it as big as De Niro, but he did become a main character in Law and Order. What? <laughs> I love Law and hey, Order. Gr oh my God. You don't like Law and Order? Grandma and Papa, I love you. You guys love Law and Order. Why would you not like Law and Order? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Do you not have a pulse? I, I do. Like, why? I don't have time for Law and Order. You know, there's best, like, I hate Best guy I in Law and Order. I guarantee you right now, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to bet you 100% right now. If you take off these, take off your headphones right now, you run up to my parents' house. Dun dun. You're watching <laughs> Law, they're watching Law and Order right now. So, Law and Order SVU oh is my one of my God. top five shows, and it's all because of Ice Tea. Really? You watch that too? I watch Law and Order SVU. Ice T, <laughs> who uh, thirty hey, years ago you're going up there right now. Hey, take Morgie. off your take off your headphones right now. <laughs> Run up to my parents. <laughs> They're watching Law and Order. But can we just talk about thirty years ago? Ice T oh. was in the band Body Count, and now he's in Law and Order. And their remember what their big song was? Oh yeah, Cop Killer. <laughs> yes. And now he's a cop on Law and Order SVU. And his wife's name is Coco. Oh. Man. You're a Law and Order guy, too? I love Law and Order. Especially like SVU? SVU. Oh, the yeah. SVU. You know? Mariska Hargitay. Oh, yeah. Whose mom was Jane Mansfield. That'd be another thing to Google. 
I don't want to talk about it on the podcast. I know who that is. I don't think I ever... Did spe- you ever watch, like, CSI? Not much. Like, that was good. CSI was good. I didn't watch it much. Are you still looking up... What am I supposed to be looking up? Holy crap. I don't know. Okay, hold on. We well, I was just going to say one. that I watched Law & Order. I don't know if I specialized in SVU, but I was just going to say it reminded me of... I was watching something the other day. So who's the bald guy? Well, in the show, it's Elliot Stabler. That's his name in the show? Or that's his real name? I believe his name is Chris Merloni. You're talking about uh, Law & Order? <laughs> yeah. He I played have no a, idea. He played a crazy guy in uh, Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. God. Um, this is so awesome. The, the ones <laughs> that I really liked was when it was... Jerry Orbach and, oh. and Sam Waterson. That that was the combo. 100%. Jerry Orbach, oh who God. you last saw in Dirty Dancing. Nerds. Well, I've never hey, seen Dirty Dancing. By the Dancing, way, I'm, so therefore... I'm sitting here with a bunch of nerds. Okay, but... Frickin' nerds. Okay, we could easily have a top three of, like, detective shows or murder oh mysteries, but that God. reminds me, I watched the other day some classic Columbo. I love Columbo. <laughs> Peter Falk. Oh, yeah. You need to watch the original In-Laws with Peter Falk and mm, Alan Arkin. That's a good like- one. I've seen parts of that with my parents. You're right, though. I need to watch the whole thing. Dude, I still can't believe your dad went to Black Sabbath. <laughs> my dad went to church when your dad was going to Black Sabbath. Yeah. Yes, this oh, is true. Um, I, I think that we've all set our number twos, and therefore... It's time for Jason to tell us his number one. It's freaking major league. <laughs> I mean, Swap already said it. Well, God it could it could it. be my number one. If I no, did this again not. another day, it could be. I know. It just is. I mean, if it makes you feel better, you already said my number one. It was Sandlot. Sandlot, for me, I've watched more than any other baseball movie. So even if, you know, objectively, I liked the movie Moneyball probably better like I, I spent my childhood watching Sandlot over and over. So no, I know. So Sandlot. Major League is. Ama- How could you say no to Wendy Peppercorn? Like, come on. I the- just, uh, I look at that movie and you think it, like you can watch that for thirty years, and still have fun. You could show your grandkids that. Major League. Yes, when it's a like, movie when, when they're it, ten. If 12, I'm laying in bed, like, hey, Grandpa's gonna. <laughs> Hey, Grandpa's, you're staying at Grandpa's tonight. Uh, okay, Grandpa, don't do anything stupid. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show him Major League, and we're gonna Man. have popcorn. Somehow, I feel like this scenario you're describing is one that will happen in your future, where yeah. you're, you're the Grandpa that's like, come on, don't show him stupid stuff. Yeah, but I, hey, they're gonna see those. But Morgie, <laughs> that's that's a movie where a lot of the things have entered the baseball lexicon yeah like if somebody can't hit a curveball you say joe boo they do and if somebody's it's like the dude driving up who's the nicest guy in the world like he drives the nicest car he's got the nicest clothes and he's freaking on the end of his career and he can't he doesn't want to get in front of the ball yeah he's he dorn he, he, yeah dorn yeah get in front of the ball dorn oh it's in my contract and, and then I've been in the dugout. On, he peed on his contract. I've been in the dugout a hundred times when somebody says, give him the heater, Ricky. Yeah. Oh. And then, oh, uh, it's amazing. And then Wesley Snipes runs like maze, hits like shit. Can I say that? Yes, he just did. Okay. But it's funny because oh, when he shows up and just those guys, it's just... It's a it's a classic movie. It's almost like it's not. It shouldn't be in the top two. It should be in like the top five of like Caddyshack. Yes, Major League, like all genres. Yeah, just like a movie that just transcends everything. They just did it right, and it's one of those. It probably got bad reviews when it came out. Oh, but it's the and best. And now movie they're, ever. the producers are like, oh my god. They're still yeah. watching. And Bob Euchre is the announcer. <laughs> Just a bit outside. Okay, hold on. I got it right here. I mean, we didn't do a category already that was Harry Doyle. Sports movies. Harry Doyle. 
What's that? We didn't do a, t- a category that was top three sports movies already, did we? No. No. We started we with basketball. basketball. No. We, went we to just, baseball. But just transcendent movies where you watch, like, I, I watched Major League last week. So I was saying earlier, every time it comes on, oh. you just have to watch the yeah. rest of it. You're sitting there. I mean, when he goes, when you see like Willie Mays Hayes shaking while he's batting. Oh, and every team in the history of the world has had a guy just like that. Or Serrano, you open up his locker and he's got idols and rum. Yeah, and it's smoking. Yes. It reminds me of like Hawaii, like where they're like, this is voodoo. And there's the old veteran pitcher that's played by the guy that was the guy in Hoosiers. Do you remember the oh, guy? Oh, yeah. And he's got like grease. Vaseline all over his arms. <laughs> he's like, hey, well, you can get me here. I'll get you here. Yes. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the major league version of Gaylord Perry. Yes, 100%. <laughs> he is. Well, okay. I've It's already, a beautiful movie. I've revealed my number one, Sandlot. I don't have anything to add. I already added a little bit. Um, swapped. You ready for your? No. Movie? Hey, what about what? what? Anything else that we haven't said about Sandlot? Well, I said Wendy Peppercorn. Okay. I'm, so what like, about anything else? Like anything Dennis else? Leary. I mean, Dennis Leary's a stepdad. Okay. Um, you know, I'm trying to think things that I relate to. Um, well, I remember they had the Erector set. I feel like I'm actually. The kid who's the nerd, because I had that stuff. Um, you know, the part where the they get the the big league cha or what 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 was, what was that called in there? You know, they they get the, the red chew, man, red man, something like that. Oh, it's the like chew? The, and they're all chewing. Oh and my just god! Vomiting red all man. Oh. over the. <laughs> <laughs> I love chew. And at one point, just this vomit lands on this kid from above. <laughs> <laughs> so my number one you ready for this I am not because your number two just blew me away I don't... yeah so my number one is the original Bad News Bears oh it, it's in my bullpen Morris yeah, Buttermaker it's in, it's in my bullpen you got Tatum O'Neill you got Jackie Earl Haley you got Walter Matthau and I think that movie it's kind of farcical but it also captures the best and worst of youth sports. Mm. You got Vic Morrow coaching the Yankees, um, and he slaps his kid on the mound. And you got Morris Buttermaker, who's a drunk, but is also the best coach in the world. (laughs) Uh, You got Tatum O'Neill. You got Kelly Leak, the renegade, (sighs) who hit 900 (laughs) with 74 bombs. That year, but also a smoke and a heater between every game. And a motorcycle. Yes. Dude, they were that was so fun. But if you think about what you said, that's what happened in the 70s. Yes. And early 80s. It could have happened to us in 85. Like you would have your dad go out and yell at you and just and don't slap you, but yell the shit the ass out of you. <laughs> but it was it's it it's kind of real. It's it, one of those it movies where it it's so real. it's so fake that it's real. It was. And you know, uh and and the there's the little kid on the team, Tanner Boyle. The blonde? Yes. Who was just a hothead. And man, if somebody did anything to his teammate, Tanner Boyle was gonna kill them. That's sports. We have those. We do. I know. I like your number one. Thank you. I yeah. really do. I would have loved to have put it as my number one. It's been so long since I've seen it. I don't have any details. In my so brain. my bullpen is that movie, uh, Field of Dreams, mm-hmm. Bull Durham. I haven't seen it. What, you haven't Bull seen Durham? Bull Durham? No. Who are you? <laughs> he is born in 1986. Susan Sarandon, no, Tim Robbins, and Kevin Costner. Oh, 88. Sorry. Two out, two years too late. 88. 
So but, Field of Dreams, I um, I love natural. Oh my god, dude, See, that's one I've, of my, where I wanted to put in, and then Kelly goes, "Well, what about the Sandlot?" I'm like, "Oh my god." The so, natural. So for you me. guys should read the natural. I've Bern- seen the movie Robert Redford. Bernard Malamud. Uh, it's it's a great like the book itself is a great good versus evil, dark versus light. Mm. It's it's a unbelievable book. I mean, just the scene at the end of that movie where he hits the ball, the lights <laughs> go out. He's got the blood that's going through his jersey, like. So epic. I'm gonna blow you away right now. In the book, he strikes out, and it's really more, and it's more powerful. Ugh. How could you change that? Like, how could you make that the, choice? Well, because you have to go watch. You have ticket sales. You got to go watch the movie. No, but like, so what year is the natural? Eighty six. I was gonna say eighty four, but, but you might be right. The book was like nineteen fifty. Seems just like. A very pivotal thing to where if that was done, people would be complaining these days. Like, how could you change the book? Like, that seems like a really important thing to change. No, they completely changed the ending. And the 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 ending in the book was absolutely palpable. Wow. How do you spell palpable? Really? Just like it sounds. Come on. Come on, Jay. <laughs> it's um, a joke. You know, some hey, movies that... Oeuvre. Okay, so some movies that were in my bullpen that did not make it. Uh, Angels in the Outfield. That was a... That was a Denny all, Glover. Yeah. Um, you know... Oh, gosh. Now I can't remember his name. Uh, I'm going to have to look that up in a bit here. But other ones were uh, Moneyball, a more recent oh, yeah. one uh, with Brad Pitt. Super good. Another good book. Yeah. Um, uh, Rookie of the Year which was a child movie, which I don't remember too much about. I think, I think this kid ends up in the major leagues. He's some crazy pitcher. So, Rock, Rookie of the Year, real quick. Yeah. To quote Morgenthaler. Um, like 12 years old, has Tommy John surgery. Yeah, yeah. And then comes out throwing like 110. Right. And so about three years ago, I went to a game at Wrigley with Kelsey. Mrs. Swap. Because that's the team he plays for is the Cubs, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the guy that played the pitcher sang the seventh inning stretch. No way. Whoa. Yes. Really? Which is a huge thing at Wrigley. I know. And Eddie Vedder's done that. Mo- so, three times. hey, on that topic, Morgie, <laughs> we went, we got there early. We got there at like nine in the morning. And we went to a place before the game that only played Pearl Jam. Oh. That's amazing. Oh. oh. I just started crying right I now. I think I might cried. So, hey, all you local, lo, oh, the guys I, that oh love our podcast, you know we we cry a lot. A I'm crying right now. To be at a at a barbecue joint across from Wrigley and listening to Yellow Lead Better at nine thirty in the morning, drinking a Bloody Mary. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's a game changer. That's. Why? By the way, if if you've never been to a game at Wrigley Field, I haven't, and then went to Wrigleyville afterwards, it's it's like a it should be in everybody's bucket list. Just that the whole the bar scene alongside of it, how you take the train through the houses out from so Chicago. So the people that lived right there, like, it's like you're driving to Wrigley. So I had a rental car, and I'm I'm like. Google directions to Wrigley and you're just driving along and you look over and it's Wrigley field. I felt like the blues brothers <laughs> well, <laughs> in that big car. <laughs> and, and for me, it was, we, we took the train out from the city out to Wrigleyville and it's just all of a sudden you find yourself and you're looking on either side and you're on this rickety track and there's just regular old houses like right next to you. That are caged off from. So the how train. are you, that Ruck? How were, how did you go to Wrigley for a game? Just um, you went out there for a friend. You know, or? I went there with my brother. We we kind of made this whole little trip where we flew into Toronto and then road trip down from there through Buffalo. Stopped and had some buffalo wings from Buffalo at one of the original places. So and, original Buffalo wings. Yes, and then moved on to uh, Canton. Stay the night in Canton, went to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Wow. 
then drove to Chicago from there and stayed in Chicago, um, saw the sights there. Underrated in Chicago is the architecture tour along along the water in the boat. One of the best tours of any mm. city I've ever seen. So what lake is that? That That's a river going through Chicago, which... Oh, it's not uh, the lake, like one of the big Great Lakes? But there's a Great Lake there. That connects to it. I don't yeah. know what lake it is. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, so then, yeah, once we were there, it's like we saw the Mariners at Chicago. Unfortunately, it rained while we were at the game, and we lost like 14-2. to two. But that was classic Mariners at the time. Hey, real quick, a couple bullpen movies. What about 42? I haven't seen it. Oh, I you know Jackie I Jackie Robinson. Back in the day when we had money in the school district, I took my class to see that. Wow. Really? Yeah. To the downtown theater. Yep. yep. They set us up at ten in the morning for a movie. Every kid got a popcorn and a drink. That's awesome. For the love of the game? Oh, that you know what? That's super underrated. Kevin Costner and God, what is his girlfriend's name in that one? Kelly Preston. Is that the girl from uh, Top Gun? She might be. No, she was married to... Uh, John Travolta. Yeah. Oh. And she was amazing in the 80s. That's a good movie. He's throwing a perfect game, and the whole movie is his perfect game, and he's like flashbacking things through his career as he goes mm. through the game. Man, there's some good baseball so movies. So I'm looking at a few. Okay. So I haven't seen that one. I, Everybody uh, wants them. Uh, another one that was in my pulpit, bullpen that I've actually seen is The Rookie with Dennis Quaid. I don't know if you remember that, Tori. He's this oh, old yeah. guy, burned out, eventually came back. I think he like was maybe at a game and he threw something at one of those pitching things, and it like clocks at 95, and he's like, maybe I still got it. So eventually he gets into the major league squad. But I would also add in, thinking back to Angels in the Outfield, the cast of that movie – is amazing. Like, here are the names. So, Joseph Gordon Levitt was like the kid, the main character. He was the main character in um, Inception. Um, got Danny Glover, Matthew McConaughey, Tony Danza, Christopher Lloyd, Adrian Brody. Holy all, crap. All in that movie. Now, can I, I just say, Tony Danza <laughs> is. Kind of the uh, Rocky Road ice cream of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's Dang. funny. Dang. Tony Danza is 72. No, he's not. Yes. No, dude, he's 48. These, dude, and he's in these, Who's the Boss. Dude, all these guys are getting old. Hey, oh here's God. a couple more. Uh, 61. Okay. F- uh, fever Pitch. Oh, that's the Boston one with... Drew Barrymore and uh, so yeah, I the funny Cobb. Guy. I got one. Oh, Cobb, Tommy Lee Jones, oh, Mister yeah. Three Thousand. Do you remember with yep, uh, Tom Selleck? Yeah, Tom in Selleck. Japan, the Bench Warmers. Oh my God, with uh, Napoleon Dynamite yep. and the kid from Mount Vernon, oh, yeah. Lindbergh. Lindbergh. <laughs> that he was in the first Fast and Furious. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I gotcha. We saw him with Gabby, uh, Rongren, and a few others. Lindbergh? Yeah, during, and I said, hey, he is the, in the fast, and they're like, no way. So they went and got a photo with him. They're like, thanks, coach. He's like the nervous guy. Right? Yes. So the one I had that did not get mentioned was, this is really old, Pride of the Yankees. Hmm. Like maybe 1948. Oh, it's right here. I have, it, I have it sitting here. What year is it? Pride of the Yankees. Oh, 1942. Oh, man. Gary Cooper. Playing, Gary Cooper. Playing yes. Lou Gehrig. And uh, the famous line, today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Babe Ruth was in that. Babe Ruth, the Babe Ruth was in that movie. Correct. Bill Dickey. The Bill Dickey, Hall of Fame catcher from the Yankees, was in that movie. Wow. Teresa Wright. No idea who that is. <laughs> Walter Brennan. Walter Brennan. I've and heard of that person. Ludwig 
Stossel. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. So that was a movie about Lou Gehrig. Okay. Obviously, Lou Gehrig's disease, and Gary Cooper played Lou Gehrig. And right now, it's coming up for the day of ALS Day yeah. at the Mariners. Oh. Well, you know, I think that we've pretty much hit all the baseball movies that we could possibly hit. Uh, pun not intended right there. Um, you know, hopefully we can get ourselves back into the Yellow Dog Studios here in the future and bust out a few more episodes. But I think that's going to be it for us today. Um, special shout out to some loyal listeners before we uh, go off the air. Elliot Ward, Rooster, Jack Curtis, Tim and Tara Starkovich, Jake Cummings, Dave Wilder, AJ Yost, Hugh Pierce, Stu Janky, DJ Kukin, Tori Swanson, Neil Clokey, Steve Meyer, Jimmy Baker, 7th Grade Boys AU Parents. And with that, reminder that you can listen to any one of our podcasts on YouTube, Amazon Pr- Prime Music, Spotify Rock, Spotify, and Apple Music, and anywhere else your podcasts can be found. Until next time. <laughs>